that pick, and then... Oh my goodness, my mic was off. I'm so sorry, guys. So uh, we have the Atlanta Bouncers versus the Columbus Pickleball Club. And I wanted to mention about this matchup. The Columbus Pickleball Club had the first pick in the MLP Shuffle Draft for the Challenger League. And they selected Jillian Braverman with that first pick. And then they made a trade with the Dallas Pickleball Club. Straight up, one for one deal. Jillian Braverman versus Megan Fudge. And so... Uh, very interesting new team dynamic for Columbus. Uh, they finished a little bit lower in the standings at Mesa MLP. Let's see if that switcheroo uh, can really help their team and propel them forward at M MLP Daytona. Yes, indeed. That was the voice of former top pro Adam Stone, current GM on the premier level, Daytona Beach, home to the second Major League Pickleball event of 2023. You're watching the Challenger level round one group play here on Championship Court at the beautiful facilities of Pictona at Holly Hill. As Adam just mentioned, Columbus Pickleball Club, the 12th place team in the Challenger standing. So this is a crucial event for them. Paul Olin, their coach on that side, and Megan Fudge, the biggest storyline there as you mentioned, and over on the other side, it is the Atlanta Bouncers. Brooke Buckner, Hunter Johnson, Ben Newell, Christine Trifunovich. And should also mention an interesting storyline here, Hunter Johnson and Yates Johnson, the twins going head to head in this battle. Michelle McMahon here in the booth, Adam Stone with you. Our Top 50 female pro Cameron Blackwood will be joining us all morning long from the sideline. Giving us her insight with the winning team on each side. And a moment ago, if you're just joining us, we saw the defending champs from MLP Mesa, the area breakers, took down the Orlando Squeeze. It came down to a three point. Every single point matters more than ever in this, in this event. Explain that to the viewers who are just joining us, Adam. More than ever. So we have, obviously, the number one winning the total match. We have uh, uh, accumulating uh, numbers for the matches. We have point differential. It all matters. We were only playing till three. Obviously, you went three out of four. You have, you have sealed the match. Uh, MLP Mesa, we were stopping the match at that three. We will be playing everything out at MLP Daytona. And hey, more pickleball for everyone. We all enjoy that. We absolutely do, and we have you covered from 360. Cameras 360 here at Pictona. The other match taking place at 10 a.m. On the grandstand court is Brooklyn taking on Texas, and uh, at 11 a.m., if you're looking for the Bay Area Breakers again, they will be on court three taking on Arizona, and on court four at the same time, 11 a.m. Eastern, will be Orlando and Dallas. Following this match, it will be Chicago taking on D.C. on championship court. But for now, it's the women's doubles matchup on championship court between Columbus and the Bouncers. On the side of the Bouncers in the black shirts, it's Christine Trivanovich back to serve her partner, Brooke Buckner. Millie Rain on the return. Going out swinging. Early error there. Megan Fudge will be the receiver on the serve of Brooke Buckner. Columbus, the team in red. Just wanted to mention that Christine Trifunovich was formerly Christine McGrath, and the only reason I bring that up is because she is a legend of the game. Lots of results early on, and so if you have been watching us for years, I just wanted to make that clear. She also attended the Military Academy at West Point. Very interesting background. Brooke Buckner finds the angle. Brooke Buckner, a former University of Michigan tennis player. Actually attended Michigan the same time I did while I was really well there. Discovered that we were friends here at Major League Pickleball when we ran into each other. 
Yeah. Michelle, we like fun facts. Fun facts. Thank you for sharing that. I was that. like, Brooke? <laughs> she was like, Michelle? I'm like, you're doing Major League Pokeball too? You, you. <laughs> Except for, there's a reason I'm behind the mic and not on the floor. Sadly. Yeah, we see Trufanovic, a couple early speed ups, definitely not known for that. Three main things when being a quality right side player, a good backhand counter, a good forehand dink, and a good forehand speed up. I think Christine checks the boxes for those three. Ruckner finds the angle back time on Billy Rain. Yeah, I don't hate the offense for Millie. Definitely known as more of a grip it and rip it type player. Uh, has gotten a little more competent and comfortable with the soft stuff, but I expect to see quite a bit of offense and trigger pulling from Millie. between uh, an attack and a soft shot. She kind of went in between uh, the two and sailed it wide. That's what I was going to say. With all of her shots. Yeah, I think it was at least two in a row, if not three. So nice job by, by Megan Fudge weathering the storm. And I like her defense to offense just a little too much. Oh. Hey. there for Rain Columbus, by the way, with only one event point from Mesa, which is why they had the first pick in the shuffle draft. They need to climb back into the standings. Good opportunity here against the fourth ranked team in the Atlanta Bouncers. Becky Ryan was the player that was previously on the uh, Columbus Pickleball Club last tournament. Very quality player in her own right, but I do think that Megan Fudge is a bit of an upgrade. She is fully committed to the tournament scene and will be playing all year long. To your point about Megan Fudge, if you're curious about what went into that trade, our Inside Major League Pickleball podcast dives into that topic with the coach on the sideline, Paul Olin. So go on ahead and subscribe to that if you would like to get the scoop. Okay, the Atlanta bouncers just too powerful, putting a lot of pressure on Columbus right now. Definitely true. Uh, Brooke Buckner kind of weathering the storm of a couple uh, Millie Rain speed ups, and they have a nice early lead of four points. Christine Trifunovic serving at 8 4. 8 4. Oh, Buckner testing the hands of Millie Rain. So far, the bouncers looking solid. Not a lot of holes on their side. Fudge and Millie Rain. A newer partnership, how do you find Nine chemistry four. and find it early? That is the question. Fudge has gone to the lob, 0 for 2. But yes, the new partnership, Michelle. Years ago, 
the talent gaps were so big, having not having the best rapport with your partner was less of an issue, but with how good everyone is now, you better be comfortable with your partner or you're going to be in big trouble. Uh, we'll see if Fudge and Rain can get this situated as we are about to switch ends. Yeah, the Atlanta Bouncers off to the races here, the first team to 11 as Columbus looks to regather. Paul Olin giving his advice on their side. What do you think he's suggesting? Yeah, he's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those situations we talked about last match. There is a progression to get to specific tactics. So I believe that he is just talking to Millie and Megan, kind of settling them down, finding uh, finding the rhythm a little bit. I think uh, it's tough to target Christine. I think she has less firepower than Brooke Butner, but she's very solid with the soft stuff. So it's kind of a, a pick your poison. And I was very impressed with Brooke Buckner the last tournament, the first extended look I got at her. She, she has played that big time tennis that you talked about at University of Michigan. So she's not, uh, the, this moment is not foreign to her. She's calm and collected. And I'll tell you, the, the bouncers are making very high quality decisions right now uh, with, with when to be neutral and soft and when to go for it. So I like their decision making and decision making is probably number one uh, aspect to, 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 to win out here uh, at the MLP. Buckner began playing pickleball in October of 2020. So she's definitely a newer entity to the sport. Her partner, Christine Trifunovich, one of the original greats of the sport. That's a, a healthy balance there between the experience and the clear talent of Buckner with that strong tennis background. What would you say the biggest adjustment is with the tennis to pick a ball? It's like, it's like I said, Michelle, it's the decision making. So I think that often the talent and the shot making is there pretty quickly, but when to use those tools is the most important. For Buckner, making a good decision there has gotten Millie Rain twice. Yes, and that was the two-handed roll dink out wide and then the one-hand attack straight ahead. Phenomenal combination from Brooke Buckner. Not going that time. Columbus gets a much-needed point. What do you think the most difficult decision to master is from the, the tennis transition to pickleball? Yeah, so a, a lot of it is, in tennis, you want to give yourself more time, so your natural reaction is to kind of throw up some lobs and often step back and let that ball bounce. Really important to hold that kitchen line, take balls out of the air, and go with drop shots as opposed to lobs when you get in trouble. open shot for Trifunovich, so smart and so precise. Yes, and they look to be targeting Trifunovich quite a bit, especially with the soft stuff dink rallies at the kitchen. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Columbus PC start dinking to Brooke Buckner a little bit more and attacking Christine Trifunovich as she has uh, shown a very con uh, competent consistency with her soft stuff, maybe switch their spot. And with Buckner, with that big two-handed counter attack, uh, uh, Trifunovich has that as well, but maybe pick your poison attacking Trifunovich as opposed to Buckner. Uh, maybe that can get them out of their funk. A lengthy discussion on unfolding on the side of Columbus, who desperately needs every point they can get here at Daytona Beach, finishing last at MLP Mesa. The Atlanta Bouncers were so close to edging their way into the finals. Mm -hmm in Mesa. I think, I think they played, it, it, they might have had one non-dream breaker, but I think every other one of their matches was a dream breaker. So uh, uh, pretty wild how occasionally a team only has one or two, and then some teams have, have a dream breaker for every match. I'm in, 14-5. Why for 
Fortune College. So it looks like they're going to hit three or four dinks there to the middle. So maybe they're going to stop pulling them out wide quite as much and play that Six, middle 14. dink more frequently. Possibly a tip they got from their uh, quality senior pro coach, Paul Olin. Trifunovich against the newly acquired Megan Fudge for Columbus. Brooke Buckner take back the serve. A couple of former Big Ten athletes on the floor. Megan Fudge played at University of Illinois. That's why that time Columbus getting some momentum. Yeah, you always want to uh, catch your opponent in the transition zone. Uh, Christine Trivanovich, very competent up at the kitchen, but if you can catch her transitioning, probably going to be a good situation. opening goes for the half Ernie she gets it yeah and we don't forget we switch sides here I, I forgot to mention that uh, that that fudge has stepped over to the right side uh, as she is definitely more comfortable on the left but with that pretty significant uh, deficit at the turn uh, they decided to make a switch I like it fudge also comfortable with that backhand She is. You see her also in that adjustment, taking up more of the court, mm -hmm. taking a step to her left, favoring more space to her forehand. A different look for the bouncers. again tagging Christine Trifunovich so the Atlanta bouncers will call a timeout how have Columbus found their momentum it's and like on their footing yeah it's like a new team out there and like I said we love to see a lot of these senior pros coming on as coaches and mentors of the younger players so some nice tips there from Paul Olin uh, uh, this uh, Columbus PC moving around their dinks a little bit more being a little less structured and predictable with where they're going with the ball and you can see that it's creating a little bit of confusion uh, with the bouncer so a nice adjustment by them on the end to change let's see if they can keep it going or possibly the, about, the bouncers making a uh, adjustment of their own. What do you think they would do, they will do to counter against uh, Fudge and Ray? Yeah, so I, I think, as I said, they're mixing up the patterns. So I, I expect uh, Christine Trifunovich to continue to be solid and look for her spots to attack with the forehand. And maybe Brooke Buckner could step up her offense a little bit over on that left side. That switch as keenly pointed out by you, Adam, seems to be working out nicely for Columbus. Yes, and you said this seems to be more of a 50-50. Often we have that left side player taking a lot, but Megan Fudge is squeezing that center line, so this is more of an even matchup, even though Fudge is on the right side. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Trifunovich. And that switch is proving to be crucial yes. for Columbus. Want to know who, who made the executive decision on that? Maybe we'll get Cam to ask at some point if they win the match. <laughs> Find out more for us, Cam. We've got to know. to handle and so Columbus climbs back within three. Yeah and you see, Megan Fudge was for the second ball was on Millie's side of the court. Very rare to see that on the right side but when you have a two-handed backhand like Fudge she's got the skill set to pull it off. Yeah. 
nice bait there with Megan Fudge stepping to the middle of the court, kind of creating a false window for Trefunovic to go up the line. Nice court positioning from her creating an error. Columbus is climbing back here on championship court, one point away from tying things up. Great adjustment. They are not pulling Christine Trifunovic out wide. She is she was making her dinks and attacking at the right point out wide to her forehand. Love the move from Millie Rain. I think it's a fantastic job after a, a great drop from Fudge as Christine was trying to keep her back. Love the move. Uh, didn't quite execute, but keep that aggression up. Uh, Columbus PC, I like it. Trifunovic yeah. just catches the top of the tape. Columbus. Back again within one. Millie Rain with the serve to Brooke 15, Buckner. 16. There's the power you were looking for from Brooke Buckner. Exactly right. And a nice job by Trefunovic loading forehand and smacking that counter attack as she is much more likely to load up on the backhand side. So good adjustment from her. Plenty of power on that counter attack as well. So we have Megan Fudge cross-court attacking and Millie Rain loading up on her forehand side and Fudge plugging the middle with her two-hand backhand. So a little, a little unusual to have that kind of setup, but man, is it working for them in the second half of this match. back at the baseline. Yes, great power there from Brooke Buckner. Some very nice strokes on the forehand side and good defense as well, uh, as well by Columbus PC. You see Megan Fudge probably getting as low as anybody out there, uh, really using her legs nicely. game continues here on championship court. Yeah, I could be wrong. It almost looked like she wanted to fire that ball uh, at, at Fudge straight ahead of her. Changed her mind a little bit, ended up going cross court. point and Megan Fudge not the easiest shot but man you're looking at a tennis Hall of Fame legend Kim Kleisters part of the ownership group for the Vegas Night Owls one of the coolest parts about Major League Pickleball is the ownership group she's a part of the premier level here in season one for the 2023 tour As the bouncers 
earn game point yes. on their side. Just as we switch back to the challenger level. Yeah, just a little too high. Not don't hate the spot, just a, left it a little bit up. And Kim Kleisters win a couple grand slams, take a couple years off, have a kid, win win a, <laughs> win a few more grand Casual. slams. You know, no big deal. No big deal. Probably could step foot on here <laughs> sure. and win a championship too. Sure, sure. So both teams frozen on their respective scores, meaning they can only earn points from here on out on their serve. 18 point. finish Millie Rain not backing off. Yeah, really nice job and hey, her not having to be as much of a presence in the middle with the fudge two-handed backhand allowed her to step to her left and hit a nice offensive shot there. Side out for the bouncers. Game point returns on their side. 2019. Trifunovic with a chance to finish. Game number one. Buckner just feels like she gets robbed by the net, so Millie Rain will take it back to serve Buckner on the return. Yeah, she had a little smile on her face too, like really? I'm gonna miss that one in this moment. <laughs> Miss for Megan Fudge, game point returning to the Atlanta Bouncers. Yeah, just one, one of the small, you know, detriments of, of being a presence in the middle on that right side is you're occasionally going to get caught behind you, and that's exactly what happened right there. number one, but what a comeback for Columbus, who looked like they had no shot the first 10 points in. What did you see in this one, Adam? Yeah, it was just a little, uh, too little too late on the comeback, but uh, a nice adjustment by them to switch up their patterns, and it was a great match because the ladies at the beginning of the match were just kind of hitting their shots and seeing what happens, and then you could see the real strategery kind of unfold midway through, and obviously at the end, unfortunate, uh, uh, for, for Columbus to dig too big of a hole. They just couldn't get out of it. So now we move on to the Battle of the Twins. It's men's doubles coming up next. But for now, the women's leaders standing by with our top 50 pro, Cameron Blackwood. Christine, an aggressive start from you guys coming out today. You were able to push them off the line almost into the transition zone. How were you able to create that? Um, I was just trying to... Um Keep my dings at their feet, um, not pop it up, push them back. <laughs> General game plan. <laughs> Seemed to work out pretty well for you. And going into that match, like I said, you had an aggressive start in the beginning, but they changed sides on the changeover. What adjustments did you have to make to make sure you came out on top? Yeah, I think when they changed sides, they went on a little bit of a run, but we went back to our original game plan and stayed aggressive, and uh, it worked. There you guys have it. Atlanta Bouncers go up one to zero. We're gonna be right back with men's doubles. Don't go anywhere. Oh my good Lord, what a feeling. All of this joy I've been stealing. We all need someone, someone that can make us believe. Make us believe. So call me a man. The Pro XR Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control 
with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. Dulce Vida, you are what you drink. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Sketchers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. We're back on Championship Court. This is the Challenger level group play. It is game number two in the series between the Columbus Pickleball Club and Atlanta Bouncers. Here's the head-to-head -head matchup. Yeah, you're not seeing double on the screen. That's Yates Johnson and his twin Hunter Johnson squaring off in this one. C.J. Klinger. The partner of Yates on the side of Columbus and Ben Newell on the side of the Bouncers. Win probability slightly in favor of Johnson and Newell. But how do you see this one playing out strategically? Well, we got we got a I mean, we love the the brother matchup. So I think they are both very competent players. But I would give Hunter Johnson a slight edge in the doubles game right now. Let's see if Yates can step up. I would look for Columbus PC to target Ben Newell. Extremely athletic, some great shot making ability, but occasionally gets a little dicey on the soft stuff. Let's see if they continue going at that spot. The bouncers are in the black t-shirts, Columbus in the red. You're looking at CJ Klinger, back to serve. One of the youngest players in Major League Pickleball. That was his partner Yates Johnson. Who will now take the serve? Yeah, don't don't hate the, the leave necessarily, but man, the racket head speed or paddle head speed creating so much spin for Yates Johnson. The Johnson twins played doubles professionally for four years on the ATP tour, earning a career high world ranking of 198 in doubles. Very impressive. Background for them. Yes, and you can see Ben Newell right there. Perfect example of that high risk, high reward type of style he plays, looking to paint the line on a forehand drive. There's the early test of Newell as you projected. Mm -hmm. And Yates Johnson with two very nice drives. One right inside the baseline, one right at the feet. And some net assistance uh, on that particular one, but Yates Johnson three for three early on with the drives. Six one. Point. No one wants that one back. Columbus needing every point they can get. A crucial game for them. The lady counterparts dropped game number one just by a couple points. Yeah, it's a very rare situation, especially in men's doubles, to return and not make it to the kitchen line. But incredible serving from a Columbus PC to force a very fast player and ben, ben Newell to stay back at the baseline. Yates won the test to the backside of Newell. Brother Hunter will take back the suit seven. for Atlanta. Yeah, look, yeah, looking like Columbus is possibly 
uh, targeting Newell on the return to uh, keep that ball away from Hunter Johnson, one of the better third shot drives in all of pickleball. The defense. Best point we've seen of the day. Columbus with rock solid defense transitioning that, translating that to a point. Yeah, I'll give I'll give the young buck credit for that. Fantastic hands from CJ Klinger. And you see He's Hunter Johnson, it. Hunter Johnson throwing the ball at Yates after that point. A little little playful, uh, playful yet competitive out there. Brotherly love. Ooh, uh -huh. and then Hunter takes that bounce with a kind of a comical fist pump there over at the other side. Four, nine. Jamming up Hunter Johnson. That's really good extension from CJ Klinger. Attacking the ball, not waiting on it, taking Hunter's time away. Just couldn't finish. You said it. He was in the perfect position to execute the shake and bake. Yeah, some slight bait there. Newell breaking to the middle. I think it forced Yates Johnson to changing his spot. He was going to try to keep his brother back. He saw Newell coming to the middle and went for a very high risk shot up the line. for Hunter Johnson. He a little victory lap, victory lap, you know, taps hands with Buckner and Trifunovich there. He's having a good old time. <laughs> Former tennis player out of SMU. Seven, ten. Opportunity. Yes, very nice load from CJ Klinger. It was basically before Hunter Johnson even made contact with the ball. We had Yates sliding to the middle and CJ Klinger just disregarding his backhand side and loading up on the forehand. And you see what that what happens when you do that successfully, that ball comes off with a lot of power. So Columbus, the first team to eleven, we will change ends. What other themes are you noticing in this matchup? Well, it, it, it was a slow start. A couple, uh, couple errors from Ben Newell earlier. It looks like he's settling in. So I expect this to be very, very tight in the second half of this match after those uh, quick early errors. C.J. Klinger, one of the youngest players on the Major League Pickleball Tour, 17 years old, has about 20 gold medals to his name. What separates him as a special upcoming talent? Yeah, uh, the, the Young Bucks, I mean, they, we'll, we'll just say sometimes uh, when you get a little older, life gets in the way. So these Young Bucks, <laughs> they, they put in their time on the court. They practice. They want it. They're hungry. He has a great combination of, uh, of size and, and kind of the soft hands. So I think that there is, is some quality physical tools at his disposal, and I expect to see his game grow in the next coming years. All right, there is an element of freedom for these youngsters. The good old days. There he is again, CJ Klinger, making a name for himself here in Major League Pickleball. That's right, keep targeting that backhand of Ben Newell. I believe Yates Johnson walked up to CJ Klinger and said all day to that spot. There it is again. Once not. And not twice, not once, but twice. Well, I, uh, for all my students back home, Yates Johnson has a special skill set to drive that ball from the midcourt. Let's not get carried away and do that back in the 4-0 games. Yates Johnson just grabbing the sideline. He likes that one. I mean, you, you love to see it, a complete step back. Everyone knew that Hunter was going to fire that ball away cross court right at his brother. So that is just good stuff right there. Nice hands from Yates. Pro tennis background shining through. Missed that time on the paddle of Ben Newell. 
This is Group C of the Challenger level. We are still in round one of group play. We've got action for you on four courts this morning. Missed that time after hammering one home for Ben Newell. So Gates Johnson will take us back to serve to his brother Hunter. Beautiful shot that time. Yeah, very nice ball. Uh, Hunter's got to find a way to get more involved. I understand they've been playing to his partner a little bit more, but you can manipulate your patterns and, and some of your shot selection to make sure uh, your, your stronger left side player gets involved. And I would almost like to see Columbus just stay soft there. Uh, Ben Newell has some quality hands, and you kind of are putting you in a situation where he can hit a great counterattack. Just stay soft over there and wait for a great opportunity as opposed to just an okay one. Ooh, what a find. CJ Corner just grabs the golden corner. Yeah, that was a nice job. Uh, ben Newell kind of in the transition zone. Klinger picking a great spot and hitting that target. Phenomenal mid-pace speed up from C.J. Klinger. As you can see, Ben Newell very much out in front of that counterattack and sails it long. A lot of different ways to be aggressive out there, Michelle. You just don't have to hit it as hard as you can every time. Great spot, great pace from C.J. Klinger. Well said. And the Atlanta bouncers trailing by seven. Columbus looking to even out the series here. After this men's doubles matchup, we will move into mix. Ben Newell is engaged on his side of the huddle with his partner, Hunter Johnson. Millie Rain preparing for her event number two debut in mixed doubles. Yeah, you could even possibly have Ben Newell be a little more aggressive with some of the speed ups. I know that's tough to do when your opponents have 17 points, but just a little, you know, putting my thinking cap on, trying to figure out a way to, to get out of these patterns that are currently favoring Columbus Pickleball Club. Time in. 17, 10. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> why, why, why not? Why not? It. A loose air uh, can start can start a run. Bouncers need it. Oh, great play, Hunter. Fault is called on the side of Columbus. The classic response from Klinger too. Like, what? Was it me? me? Yeah. On the step back, you guys talk about that. Your leading foot can sneak forward on that. Yeah, it happens to me all the time. No big deal for Columbus. They are back to serve CJ Klinger, three points away from evening out the series. Oh, Hunter Johnson with the body back. Yeah, he's he's beauty. Klinger just kind of checking to see if that was going to go in. It definitely was going to. Uh, you know, good, good things happen with the slide and the load, and sometimes you get caught. Go. Go. Yeah. Oh, that's Johnson put on it with style on that point. I think Ben Newell saved him. I think the you ball do. the ball before he put it away, I think was gonna sail wide. Very tough when you're scrambling in the midcourt to have that awareness to let the ball go out, but I think it was. Oh, tough bounce off the net. CJ Klinger couldn't react fast enough, and so the bouncers take the point and the serve. Ben Newell. Yeah, you see Hunter taking more, not only at the kitchen line, but also a little bit more in the backcourt as well. Uh, just a half step or a step more to his right to kind of support and help out his partner, Ben Newell. Just like that, Columbus evening out the series. Yates Johnson and C.J. Klinger come away comfortably 
in game two, 21-14 finish. What did you like about the way they strategized this game? I mean, they there, there was no place to pick. I, I, I didn't really see a situation where I was like, oh, bouncers clearly do this and this and this. They did not miss. Their aggression was well-timed. And the handful of defensive situations they got, got into when they were scrambling, uh, they did a fine job of getting back to neutral. So a very well-played match uh, from Columbus Pickleball Club. Kudos to them. Cameron Blackwood has a chance to catch up with the winners. Yates Johnson and C.J. Klinger is with her now. C.J., you guys were down 0-1. You had to come back to tie this up 1-1 with an aggressive start, a 21-14 win here. What was the strategy that you and Yates talked about before stepping on the court? Uh, just pull, stay aggressive, uh, stick to our plan, and, and execute. Definitely worked out. And you're playing your brother on the other side of the court. Does that make things easier or harder for you because you know his game so well? Uh, I'd say it makes it harder for sure. We, we know each other very well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's basically the best brother wins, and uh, I took that one, so <laughs> I'll take it. There you guys have it. Columbus ties it up one-to-one. -one. We're going to head into our first mixed doubles match. Don't go anywhere. First surgery was a total knee replacement. I ended up with an infection they were gonna have to amputate my leg. That just was not okay with me. The moment I entered HSS, the care was exceptional. For somebody to tell me you're gonna keep your leg, it was magical. Everything is so alive because I got my life back. On championship court, we have an even series once again between Columbus and Atlanta. We've seen this story before here this morning. We had a dream breaker. I wouldn't be surprised if this one also goes to a dream breaker, but we move on to the mixed doubles portion of this matchup. It's Columbus who put out Megan Fudge and Yates Johnson against Ben Newell and Brooke Buckner. We heard a moment ago Yates saying it's a the better brother wins, and that time he got the edge. That's right. right. So Yates, Yates claims that Hunter is an inch taller and he's better looking. So, <laughs> so he's not only better looking, he got that match win there. As I said, that I would lean a little bit more towards Hunter in the doubles aspect of pickleball. Yates says no, 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 no. Columbus is the home team, as Cameron Blackwood from the sideline tells us. So they got to react to the matchup of Brooke Buckner and Ben Newell. Obviously feeling confident in this matchup. There two seconds. Ben Newell right out of the gate with that aggressive forehand you've been looking for. Yes, and, and it's always a, a, a little different matchup about when you have a, left, a lefty guy. Mm -hmm. So is it... it it's a different matchup. You have the, the female on the left often, especially some fresher, newer females are more comfortable on the left. So we'll see what happens here. Buckner goes 
toe-to-toe -to -toe against Yates Johnson. Almost comes away with it, just too close. Yeah, he, w he was a little fortunate on that counterattack. He didn't hit it perfectly clean, but got a paddle on the ball, and that ball got back to Brooke Buckner very quickly. opening from Yate Johnson after a very patient point from all four players. You have the ladies in that classic battle with Buckner uh, occasionally slicing, but mostly going with the top spin dinks and, and Megan Fudge really carving that backhand slice. Newell taking over this net. Yeah, and I would actually say that Ben Newell is a little stronger in mixed mm. than men's with some of his movement athleticism and he has some very good power once that ball goes shoulder or above. To your point on Newell, he's beaten 11 of the top 20 men's doubles players in a competitive environment. This is his third MLP event. Loves the format. Yes, again. Well, I was just going to say, the very first event um, that he played, he filled in for me. That's right. Uh, so just a little small fun fact there. He did a great job for the Mad Drops in that particular tournament as well. Up, up. Uh, you, I mean, we'll, we'll just we'll just label that she went for it. So uh, I, I probably wouldn't always speed up that ball. Don't think it was a terrible decision, but certainly not uh, really close to keeping up, keeping that in the court, looking to body up her opponent. Ooh, yeah. nice. Good try, good about try. But it, we talked about this matchup with the lefty guy, but we have an. Uh, relatively unusual situation where we have the righty playing the right with Yates Johnson and Megan Fudge. And what is it for Yates Johnson? What goes into the strategy there? Well, one main thing is that Megan Fudge is more comfortable on the left. She also plays some mixed doubles with her husband, Ryler DeHart, a team member of the Chicago Slice, and he is left-handed, so he will be playing the right side in that matchup. Yeah, and it could be that she's more comfortable there, or maybe they just like it with the girls cross court from each other. So they know Newell is going to play the right, so they can kind of have free reign to counter attack or, or counter their uh, their uh, strategy. Picking his spots when to get in there. Not a perfect science. Uh, main issue with the right-hander being on the right is Newell has his forehand in the middle and Yates has his backhand in the middle. Definitely a different situation. So that time was Yates Johnson. So Atlanta with a three-point lead. Yeah, having that crisp eye of tracking the ball when you're playing a team that really likes to drive so important as many of those are going to sail out for Johnson that's tough with that two-hander sacrificing a little reach if he's going to step over in front of Megan I don't hate the play but with two hands it's a, it's a more difficult proposition Your footwork has to be on point great one-handed Flip from Buckner. We saw it a couple times in women's doubles, and uh, you know, works against the ladies, works against the guys too as she jams up with Johnson. Nice. 
very low attack attempt from Megan Fudge. But she had she had been Newell and Knotts. So if that if that ball would have come over, it would have been a lot of trouble for him, but definitely a high risk, high reward shot. I mean, how did how did they win that point? <laughs> I don't Un know. Unbelievable. He's still processing. Yes. Green is still calibrating that one. <laughs> Johnson is struggling with a couple of unforced errors. So the Atlanta bouncers, the first team to 11, will have an end change. J.W. Johnson, member of the Premier Level League. And his Mama Bear Julie in the crowd. One of the best parts about Major League Pickleball is the camaraderie amongst all pro players, the team aspect. You've played in it. You know of how much fun this event is to be a part of, to watch, oh, to definitely. support. The energy is palpable. And the thing is, is for these players, in a standard tournament format, you are you might play with your opponents a couple tournaments later. You're you know, you're mixing up your partner, so there's not a lot of cheering amongst the players, but in this team format, you have full reign to go for your squad, cheer for your team, and, and you can sense that energy, uh, uh, whether you're on court playing or you're a fan or a spectator, whether that's through the live stream or here in person. Uh, just a great atmosphere for everyone, Michelle. And for the premier level players, it's advantageous to scope the challenger players because if any player goes down or they have to fill an opening at the premier level, they get to select from the challenger pool. That is correct, because the challenger pool play will be finished today. So that's exactly right. Johnson regathering uh, himself at the break, cuts the lead to five. Yeah, really nice job. I, I thought he was going to go cross quarter middle and to really pronate that wrist, get inside the ball and push it to the left side of Brooke Buckner was well, well played. There he is again. He needed a strong rebuttal after a couple of errors before the end change. I think he went with the two-handed counter there. Better two, choice. On the forehand, two-handed oh. forehand, yeah. So I know Mary Brasha does that, a couple other players do that. Definitely awkward for me, I can't do it. Why would, why would they do that? A little more stability. Uh, maybe they're fooled and they're just kind of lunging, uh, leaning backhand and then they sw switch over to the forehand side. So uh, just a little comfort level uh, with some players. Uh, as I mentioned, less, less reach, but more stability and control when you bring that second hand on the paddle. So it's, uh, it's obviously something that he feels uh, is better for him, even if he is sacrificing a little reach. Timeout is called on the floor. So the bouncers with an early year, Columbus, looking to respond. Yeah, and I think Paul Olin had uh, some words of wisdom for the troops down there as he stepped up and called that timeout. It was not one of the players. So uh, that this could be something strategic, and I'm guessing that it is. We've already seen uh, a Fudge mix around her dinks a little bit more instead of getting totally locked into that cross-court battle with Brooke Buckner. I think Ben Newell is probably a good player to play as the male to his backhand dink as one. Uh, he probably probably is a little more comfortable with the offensive stuff, and he really leaks to the middle and tries to control the middle of the court, so occasionally going behind him, uh, I believe is a good play for Johnson and Fudge. Buckner will bring back the serve to Megan Fudge. He's there, good timeout for Columbus. Yeah, so hard uh, when you're making that strong off offensive move on a poach, so hard to pull back 
when your opponents hit a good ball. Bouncers stay on top by six. So uh, Brooke Buckner there, slight hesitation on that attack. And instead of going straight up the line, she played the middle, giving her opponents a little bit more time, and she paid the price. Yeah, and it was a nice setup from Ben Newell, who one of the issues uh, with possibly targeting his backhand with the soft stuff, if you leave it a little high, he has a nice reach to, to poke that and, and start the offensive onslaught. Look at the man, he's got the best calves in the game. <laughs> you, know, you, you know he's got hops, you can't lob that man, no way. He was a pole vaulter as a kid before finding tennis in middle school. Stop it, pole vaulter? I, mean, I have not, not had one of those on court. Also played football and soccer. Well-rounded athlete. And I believe he also has a twin. Kitchen, Newell has been dominant in his mixed doubles matchup. He's done great. So, I, as I mentioned, uh, a couple loose errors in the men's match, and I even talked about possibly strategically playing some balls to his backhand in this mix. He's been up to the task. Right on cue, commentator curse for my man over there. But they got a nice cushion to work with, don't they? Go ahead and yell at your sorry over <laughs> to Ben Newell. He hates Johnson with the serve. And a side change on their side for Columbus is, is an interesting change up. Now with the guys going straight up against each other, what's what's changed since making that change? Yeah, so that 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 switch. What's okay, let me let me let me process during this what's point. Changed? Like you said, you were calibrating earlier, I am right now. So it's, 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 it's one of those situations where it's, the situation's relatively dire, the gap is pretty big, let's just change it up. So maybe they had something very specific in mind. I'm not necessarily seeing that, it's just, let's try something new. Sideline. Yeah, I don't have that one. Some some of these guys with the with the two that was a beauty. Yeah, the two handers up the line and their ability to go cross court and up the line to all the spots. Two handed flick. Very impressive. Deceptive too. Yeah. Megan Fudge goes toe to toe against Brooke Buckner. University of Illinois tennis against University of Michigan tennis. Mm -hmm. Strong backgrounds on both sides. Fudge, the Illini grad, will try to continue the comeback for Columbus. Yes, Ben Newell trying to catch Yates Johnson coming forward towards the middle of the court. He went behind him, but a beautiful job by Johnson kind of holding his ground and carving that backhand volley. Too much spin for Buckner to handle. Yeah. 
Columbus inching their way back, three points away. Timeout now called on the side of the bouncers. It's so just, it's just so fast. It's I mean we're talking about healthy cushions for these teams, uh, sometimes at the end change or sometimes on the timeout, and then it's 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 literally three or four points later, one or two minutes, and we have a three point game. So uh, we talk about the format a lot, but just another example of how anything can happen and how quickly things happen out here at MLP Daytona. Rally scoring always makes things adventurous, especially when the margin of error is so slim and the level of play is so similar. That is very true right here on teams proving that point. Columbus once again finished at the bottom of MLP Mesa. They have a lot more to gain from a matchup like this. The bouncers just barely missed their opportunity, losing in a dream breaker in the semifinals. I believe it was to the eventual champions. That is correct. Won the championship, so the bouncers that extra edge being so close. Can make a statement here. Yeah, we had Hunter Johnson acting as player coach over there on the sidelines on the timeout, imparting some words of wisdom for his squad. Still a three-point cushion. Never mind, make that two. Here comes Columbus. That's right. He might have a reasonable idea of, of how to pick on his brother Yates. So probably some good insider info uh, coming out of Hunter Johnson's mouth. May the best brother win. So they say. Another error for the bouncers and Columbus climbing within one. It's always nice when your opponents have you on a string and you're scrambling. You get yourself back to the kitchen line and then win the point. Very rewarding. The, the dink was kind of hovering there, and I was like, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And he went He's right do it. He went right for Ben Newell uh, and executed that two-shot combination to perfection, putting that cross-court forehand away to seal the deal. 18-18. Johnson with the serve to Newell. holding their breath and hanging on for a point. Brooke Buckner with the serve. It was crazy. You're exactly right. They ended up single file at the end of the point. The I formation. <laughs> the I formation rarely works, but it certainly did that time. <laughs> Risky but effective. Mm -hmm. Game point for the bouncers. Yates says no. Columbus yeah. is back. Yeah, nothing just perfectly placed from Yates Johnson. Uh, Atlanta bouncers in the right position in the midcourt to try to dig something out. Just uh, too, too much placement uh, from Yates and putting it away on the next ball. Oh, easy. 
defending opportunity for Yates Johnson. Yeah, defending ATP is never easy, but probably one of the easier, easier. looks. Correct, easier. Michelle. Absolutely right, though. His reaction said it potentially wasn't easier. But to your point, very true. Yeah. Another game point fended off by Columbus. That's right. Hand in the cookie jar there. As Ben Newell trying to take a hair too much court. And his opponents found that spot behind him. Reminder, we are in the free zone on both sides. Columbus frozen on 18. Atlanta on 20. You cannot, or you can only, rather, earn a point on your serve from here on out on both sides. How the heck does he make that shot? How does that drop in? I had the perfect, I was right in line with that shot up here in the booth. And I was he, like, he's done. It, the, the window was so small to fit it in there. High degree of difficulty and great execution from Yates Johnson. Run it back one more time. How about that beauty <laughs> of a finish? But what impressed me the most was that defense on the ATP, a much more difficult shot. You heard Ben Newell. He didn't even say words. He just goes, ah, oh. <laughs> let that ball go out. <laughs> We've all been there before. <laughs> and so game point back on the side of the bouncers. as close as it gets. Atlanta coming away with the first mixed doubles matchup. That was as close as we've seen it here on Championship Court, Adam. Yes, great match. And I, I actually like the spot. I know he overextended a little bit from Yates Johnson, but he had been going behind with sharp angles to Ben Newell several times in a row. So I do think there was a gap in the middle, even though the shot was a tough one. Great defense on both sides. Megan Fudge proving her worth as the newest acquisition on the side of Columbus in exchange for Joe Brakerman and Cameron Blackwood standing by with the winners. <laughs> You know, we just played our game at that point, took it to where we knew and the weakness was, and we worked out. A little nervous, though, for sure. There you have it. And then talk to me about what the advantages are of having two forehands in the middle. Yeah, I mean, playing with Betty is a pure joy. Um, and I trust the story of the middle. I always kind of attack the right ball, and I think you can lose a little bit of weight there. There you have it. Landon goes up 2-1. to one. We're going to come back with our next mixed doubles. So we're going to work. Hard to find supplements that work. Thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Dulce Vida, you are what you drank.
At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. On championship court, it is the second mixed doubles matchup between the Atlanta Bouncers and Columbus Pickleball Club. Billy Rain and her partner C.J. Klinger taking on the experience Christine Trifunovic and Hunter Johnson. We saw Hunter Johnson's twin eights go down in that earlier game, and now Columbus with a chance to even out the series when it comes to this partnership. Johnson and Trifunovich, what are you looking for in there? Son? Well, as I mentioned about a strong right side. Oh, we got the dance off. Wait a second. Oh, Before my. you answer that, we've got, we've got a dance off. We've got a knee brace, and she's going strong. I want to come dance with you, Grandma. I'm coming. That's the best part about me. Who, who cares about my analysis? That was fantastic. Caitlin Kerr <laughs> doing a wonderful job being the lady amongst the people. Pickleball chick. Hyping up the crowd here in Daytona Beach. But I do think the bouncers have a great matchup here. Trifunovic, as I mentioned, great cross-court dinker and a solid backhand counter. And the mobility of Hunter Johnson to cover a good portion of the court allows Christine free reign to do her thing. big forehand down the middle. And yes, this matchup with the ladies in front of each other could cause a small issue for Trifanovic, who is comfortable dinking up the line, but more comfortable dinking cross court. So having her target Millie Rain in front of her could throw off her rhythm a little bit. This is Dave Klinger, of course, the lefty in this matchup. Nope. Ooh, just wide, the bouncers get their first point of the game. And you see you see Hunter looking for the Burt early in the match. So he's, he's looking to make moves. Uh, he knows he's got a rock right next to him, but he's looking for offense. Bouncers with a chance to win the match here on this game. Columbus could push a dream breaker. Yes, and the decision making of Millie Rain uh, is definitely going to be a big factor in this match as well. She has some nice offensive weapons at her disposal. I think occasionally she gets in trouble of when to use those weapons. Tough error there. Yeah, when and a good serve to yeah, the Hunter serve. Johnson. <laughs> uh, I think a combination of both. Uh, probably should have made it, but at the same time, when you hit a serve off the, the skids off the back line, doesn't make it easy. No, nope. especially that backhand side. Yes. Another error for Columbus and Atlanta takes their first lead of the game. Yeah, and, uh, and it'll, it's a big test for C.J. Klinger as well. I know when I was younger, 17 specifically, I probably <laughs> would have had some issues maybe being the alpha and taking control on the mixed doubles court. Let's see what kind of offense he comes up with. That was a smart play by Klinger to find the backside of Hunter Johnson. A yeah. little high, but effective. Yes, and, and that's exactly right. Going soft behind that left side nail, as long as you don't do it too much, uh, a great in general strategy for mixed doubles. Four, five. Yeah, 
that was impressive. And I'm also, I'm always impressed with these young kids because I'm not going to lie to you, I was a disaster when I was a teenager. <laughs> so the, some of the composure at, at this at this stage and at this level from some of the kids in this tournament is awesome to see. The Atlanta Bouncers haven't looked back since gaining momentum a couple of points ago. weathering of the storm from Millie Rain after two strong drives from Hunter Johnson, who, like Ben Newell, I would probably say is slightly better in mixed than gender doubles as well. Mm. And why is that? Well, he has a great third shot drive, and his movement is spectacular, especially, especially laterally at the kitchen line. So uh, he can cover a lot of court and be offensive when he does. So that's why I would say I would lean a little bit more towards. Some of the more solid, more stationary players are better at gender doubles, myself included. Uh, I'm not I'm not the, the biggest guy or the best mover out there. So when I can hang out on my side, I do OK. But when I have to cover a lot of court, I run into trouble. Hunter does not have those issues. Establishing dominance in the kitchen. Right way to get in there from CJ Klinger, stepping all the way over on Millie's side and finishing the point nicely. Klinger, an athlete as well, played a lot of soccer, basketball, and tennis growing up. Still growing up. Toughness yeah. yeah. right there. So Atlanta continues their two-point lead. Yeah, and it's easier for C.J. Klinger to load his forehand in men's doubles than mixed doubles. Uh, his male partner, uh, just a bigger guy, can cover some more court than Millie can, so he's going to be have to be careful when Hunter Johnson is attacking him straight up. If he slides to his right, that puts a lot of pressure on Millie Rain. shot Hunter Johnson. Incredible deep. Out wide and caught the line. And had top spin on. Yes, right, right. So I think Millie had a reasonable look, but with that sharp of an angle from Hunter Johnson, uh, her footwork was a little shaky. It didn't quite get her feet underneath her with her balance, and uh, therefore that caused the error. So Atlanta, the first team to 11 points. We will be switching sides. So far, Hunter Johnson and Christine Trifunovich have been unwavering. What's causing so much stability on their side? Yeah, it's, it's a total pattern. It, it is a clear-cut role. I feel like uh, possibly CJ Klinger and Millie Rain are trying to figure out exactly their court position and how much CJ should take. And it seems much more clear on the bouncer side where Christine's going to be and allowing Hunter Johnson to have that free run. What would your advice be if you're Paul Owen talking to CJ Klinger and Millie Rain? Yeah, so I, I would probably right now look to amp up the aggression just a smidge because I think these completely structured and neutral rallies are a little more in favor of the bouncers right now. So uh, possibly uh, instead of letting uh, the bouncers control and dictate the patterns, possibly pulling some triggers earlier and kind of getting them out of their uh, of their structure would be a good option. Where are you attacking on their side? Mostly to Millie, unless CJ is overextending. I kind of I flip flop my teams there. It's going to be hard for Millie to attack Millie. That's going to be very difficult. So I would look to attack Christine Trifunovich unless Hunter is overextending. I think it actually still applies on both sides. <laughs> there you to go. your point. There you I don't go. think you're wrong. <laughs> That's what we saw in the first the strategy unfolds so far. Columbus just hanging on. Anything can change in a, a moment with Rally scoring. Oh, CJ 
Klinger with a put away. <laughs> that, was a that was a pretty a very slow, a very slow winner. But I, I <laughs> love the start of that point. The bouncers neutralized it and were able to get forward. But Klinger, third shot drive, catching Trifunovic transitioning, and then several offensive shots after that. I like it. That was a great snack by Johnson to even keep that point alive. Yeah, and wanted to mention also that this is Group C play. We have the Brooklyn Aces and the Texas Ranchers facing off uh, the other two teams in that group on grandstand court right now. Absolutely. Okay, Hunter Johnson is not missing at all. Yeah, it was a great combination. Three shots needed after that initial speed up, and the counters weren't terrible from Columbus Pickleball Club, just too good from Hunter. still lose it. Unbelievable defense from the bouncers. That is defeating. And paying off your point of our continuous coverage on court three with Bay Area, taking on Arizona and court four, Orlando and Dallas. So whoever you are looking to support, we've got you covered. Right Adam is hopping over to grandstand court after this. Yes, myself and on Utah to cover. Yeah, You're to not cover. taking them on. Hey, hey, we'll <laughs> we'll see actually about that, Michelle. Maybe they need a sub. <laughs> You're willing and able. That was Utah and Miami. For him, on grandstand. But for now, it's all change of court. Columbus with a fortuitous error on the side of the bouncers. They're creeping. They're creeping back in it. so subtle when the yes. momentum starts yes. to shift and, and they're sneaking close. And, and when you start your comeback when the opponent has 14 instead of 18, that really helps a lot. Oh, what? <laughs> yes, what athleticism from Hunter Johnson. We saw that a couple times in earlier matches where the comeback was a little too little too late. They only have 15, so they have not a lot of time to work with, but a little bit. Let's see what Columbus has. Hunter basically played singles on that point and paid off accordingly. He's still within one. Oh, Rob Cassidy. He's oh, all, Rob Cassidy. Always in the mix. Yeah, that was a great follow from Klinger after a nice initial speed up. He could have just let that ball travel to Millie, but he went and cut it off and put that ball away nicely. Don't look now, but Columbus takes their first lead of the game. Timeout on championship court. Yeah, awesome job. and. Hunter Johnson has the athleticism, but it's tough and mixed when you are really being a presence in the middle to not only be the, the middle presence, but hit an Ernie off to your left side. Very tough to cover all that court, and he just couldn't come up with that last ball. So earlier you pointed out more pressure on Trufanovic. Clearly Columbus has done that. Mm -hmm. How have they been able to create that momentum? Well, exactly. So, well, one, it's just pulling an occasional trigger more, but also having those nice setup shots to get you an opportunity. So you don't really create these opportunities out of nothing. They're kind of set up from some previous soft shots or some previous patterns that you get into. So I think they're doing a nice job uh, of getting, whether it's uh, uh, Millie on the left or CJ from the middle of the court with his forehand to attack Christine Trevanovich and and it's paying some dividends uh, uh, here as after the end, end switch. So I, I like what I'm seeing. I expect to see more of the same. And as we mentioned, there's adjustments and then there's readjustments. Even if you have that good, solid strategy going, if your opponents adjust, you've got to come back with something. You can't keep beating your head against the wall. Very true. Columbus looking to build on their first lead. Yeah. Millie Rain punches first on the Ernie. 
mean, I was even thinking during that point, maybe we just target Millie Rain with soft stuff, and boom, Ernie right when that happened. So a nice job by her creating some offense on the Ernie. Just wide for CJ Clean. How early are you making that decision on an Ernie? As a player. Oh, absolutely. So second, right? Well, the, the thing is, for me, someone who lacks athleticism, I have to kind of set that up and anticipate. Some of the more explosive athletes out there, uh, Deckel Bar, Tyler Loon, come to mind, obviously. They can wait a little bit longer because they have that jump and that leaping ability. I don't have that. So um, I, from this vantage point, which wasn't fantastic, I thought that ball was for sure wide, but it looks like we're going to have a challenge, Michelle. Yeah, Columbus is challenging the call. The call outside of the bouncer is that that ball was wide. Columbus is using one of the two challenges. Reminder, you're just doing this. The rules for the second event of 2023. Each team gets two challenges, two free challenges per game. And when you run out of those, you continue to challenge. But if you're wrong, you lose the point. Yes, and I think the key word in all of that, Michelle, was free. So I'm not, I don't think that Columbus PC has an overwhelming thought that this was, that ball was in, but it might be, so why not? When you have, when you have the free challenge. late in the game. Exactly. And you can no longer, building off that point, you can no longer defer to the referee whether that ball was in, out, takes the refs out of the line calls, and yes. makes it more objective for the replay technology. Definitely, 17-16 as well. You said if it's 3-1, maybe they keep that challenge in the back pocket, but at 17-16, it's a free timeout. You might get the call that you're looking for. Why not? They can fudge talking strategy on the sideline with our counterpart CJ Clear and Millie Ray. She has a lovely accent. She does. I think that the fudge Braverman uh, trade was very even. Their levels are similar, but they get there in a different way. Jillian Braverman peaks and valleys, kind of up and down, and Megan Fudge are a lot more of a known commodity, even though she probably doesn't have quite the offense of Jill Braverman. Very interesting analysis. And our action continuing. The call stands. The ball is out of bounds. And so Columbus loses one of their free challenges. They still have one left to use in this game. Atlanta still has both of theirs on their side, should they need to use it this close at the end of the game. 
Dimitri Fudovic with the serve to CJ Klinger. CJ Klinger. Wow. A couple times he's gotten caught for that yes. today. So once on the overhead and that one just stepping to the middle of the court. Oh my goodness, Hunter Johnson. the single-handed hero of the point. Well, let's listen to what they're saying here. They're gonna, they're gonna challenge the double bounce. Hey, Columbus is, he is challenging the uh, double bounce during the rally. The score is the rally stands is 18-17. Referee timeout. Okay, referee timeout, okay. So, okay, so Hunter's questioning why didn't they challenge right away? Why did they let the point play out? Uh, I, I get excited on these controversies, but I, I'm trying to do a little better job of just letting what's happening out there happen without me talking, but I'm very excited. Very so excited. Controversies are fun. It's good. It's good. It's good for the game. Yeah, it is. It is. So I Let's think... Let's amp up the controversy here. Number one, I can't believe that he got that ball, but I actually think he slid the paddle underneath and it was not a double pass. I thought he got it. Yeah, so that, that's a live action. Hard to tell. We'll see on the replay. But if I had to pick one, I think he got there. To the naked eye, it looked like he got there. But this is a crucial momentum swinging point. Either way this goes, eh, worth the risk for Columbus. Yeah, that's right? a, and and we we talked about those timeouts late in the game, but all of a sudden they're in a situation where they have to use both. So, so Paul Olin in discussion on the other side with Atlanta. And we see head referee Courtney Johnson stepping in. Uh, I don't think we have a sound bite of that, so I'll try to try to see, Recent try to re lips. relay what I'm seeing here. Yes. Paul Olin, a top senior pro, advising the Columbus Pickleball Club. I feel like that's a strong choice, Paul Olin. Some great results. Really even keeled, smart guy. Uh, I'm, I'm sh have no doubt that's an advantage to have him on the bench for the for the Columbus PC. And it also, they, we've seen Columbus make some strategic changes mm -hmm. all match long, and I'm willing to bet Paul Olin was a, a key part of those decisions. Right, and, and one of those switches, I saw Paul call the timeout. So it was not the players on court, it was Paul seeing something, calling the timeout, and then relaying that information to his squad. Uh, it's really nice to have an outside set of eyes. In the moment, no matter how good you are strategically or, or uh, how smart you are, in the moment you can be blind to certain things. So to have a strong set of outside eyes looking in can really help Michelle. It's objective. Especially even if you're the two players on the sideline watching the game, it helps to get a bird's eye perspective where you're not as emotionally bought into the match. Totally true. So we are awaiting the verdict on the double bounce. Hunter Johnson is so incredibly athletic, so fast. You can tell his strong his background and his ability to chase down balls and earn points that are just seemingly impossible. I mean, I was ready to start talking. I thought the Me point too. was I'm over. I was like, great point and scramble. Good hustle from Hunter Johnson. Oh, my goodness. He got it. <laughs> and he got it. Never say never to the last. <laughs> the Johnson brothers. And, and, he, and then after he gets it, he does a 360 spin, gets back in position, and then strikes the next ball. So uh, not just the get, it's the recovery as well. Uh, just just high-level stuff from Hunter. That's why we have replay, Michelle. So to in the, uh, live to the naked eye, we both thought he got it. It was a double bounce. Columbus PC serving at 18-17. And they keep that free challenge.
capitalizes on a crucial momentum winning point. Now up by two. And a great dig from his partner halfway through that point. She was in big trouble. Most. The load and slap. The load and slap. Love to see it. I see a lot of players when that ball goes up shoulder and above, they just kind of stroke it with topspin. I like to see that loose arm, and I want to see them whip through with as much power as possible. Trifunovic, nice job. Finds the corner, ties it up at 19. That offense doesn't always have to be out of the air. If that ball lands in front of Hunter and it bounces up too high, you know he's going to fire away. Oh, Cleaver will take advantage of the net bounce. Lo love it. Uh, obviously, let uh, uh, aided in that winner, but I like his positioning. I want him to be aggressive and to take that ball at Trifunovic, which he did. We enter the freeze on the side of Columbus. Oh. Hunter Johnson not going anywhere. Oh, I thought Klinger had it. Nice pressure, another nice high ball from Trifunovic, and then her partner uh, taking over from that point and sealing the deal. Frozen on the side of Atlanta as well. We're in the frozen zone on both sides. Yeah. With an incredible angle, earning the surf back. How did he hit that shot? That was so good, and he's had a little trouble putting the ball away, hitting through the court with the incredible defense from the bouncer. So to find that angle, keep the ball away from Hunter Johnson is very nice. Millie Rain wants that one back. Yeah. Keep going, Millie. Keep going. That's the right shot in the right spot. Just a near miss, top of the tape. So tough to give up those shots when they're so close. Columbus gets the serve back and a chance to push a dream breaker. Hunter Johnson. Uh, it looks like 2019 Trifunovic over there with the two-handed backhand counters. Two great uh, counter attacks and then Hunter Johnson. <laughs> Jamming up Hunter Johnson, a rare sight. Nice job from Klinger. Oh, we have the referee, Fudge, coming over with some tips and the referee corralling her a little bit. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> and CJ Klinger. Oh, two for two on the Dream Breakers. And it was a really nice job of Millie cleaning up some loose air she had in the first half of the game. And the young buck, CJ Klinger, making his presence known and stepping over a little bit more to his left to be a presence in the middle. You wanted aggression. You got it. That was a huge comeback win for Columbus, the team that finished last in Mesa, looking to make a name for themselves here in Daytona Beach. A huge win for them. Can they get it done in the Dream Breaker? Let's find out as we go courtside now to check in with the third member of our crew, Cameron Blackwood, standing by with the winners. CJ, must win to take you guys into the Dream Breaker. We would love to know what did Megan say on that last point in order for you guys to get that win? Uh, she said, let Milla take the third so I can come in and crash. It's her third so bad. <laughs> Thanks so 
much, Cameron. And remember, Columbus is the home team. They had to, or got to, adjust, react mm -hmm. first yes, in the yes, mixed doubles yes. matchup. So now they have to react second, meaning yes. they have to put their singles rotation out first. If you're new here, this is the Dream Breaker format. Each player will play a rotation of four points. Columbus lays out their matchup, and then Atlanta has a chance to counter with who they feel is a stronger matchup in singles. And on paper, very tight matchup here. I think it was across the board. There was a clear cut favorite in our first Dream Breaker of the day. I don't believe that's the case for this particular matchup. Everyone on Columbus PC is very competent, and I would say the bouncers probably have the weakest and the strongest player on the court. Uh, Trifunovic, not a, a stalwart of the singles game anymore, but Hunter Johnson, one of the best in the entire challenger bracket. So is it gonna be the more balanced PC or some of the high-end shot making of Hunter Johnson that can carry the bouncers over the top? Find out in just a moment. So much talent will be on display. What's your favorite part about the Dream Breaker format? Well, it's it's the possibility. Well, it's a funny story. So my first MLP, I played for the uh, the uh, Clean Cause team, and Callie Smith was on my team. And we went to five of seven Dream Breakers, and I played four women because Callie gets jacked up playing guys. That's so she she wanted the matchup against the guys, so I got the ladies. So what other what other professional sport can the guys play the ladies and the ladies have a legitimate shot of being even or winning possibly? So I think it's great in that regard, the different matchups. And a lot of these standard tournament formats, Michelle, you get into a rhythm in your singles game. At four points at a time, it really is kind of a crap shoot and anything can happen uh, with that small sample size. So I'm very excited to see who steps up uh, in this matchup. I think it could be anybody. We saw, to your point, that happened at the premier level, the, a perfect example to everything you just said. Emily Waters with several passing shots against Tyson McGuffin. Oh, yes. And the crowd was going nuts. Here you have a 16-year-old girl mm -hmm. against a, a prolific pickleball man who's been around the sport since its inception. Basically, yes. And it was so much fun. The crowd erupts. Any Anytime the guy gets lit up by the ladies, whether it's singles or doubles, the crowd erupts, and I do too. I love it. And, and just another little fun fact about that matchup you just talked about, Michelle. The New York Hustlers set their lineup with Tyson McGuffin first, and Anna Lee chose yes. to play Tyson. So, uh, very better. cool, very cool. Even better. Cameron Blackwood chiming in from the sideline to us, giving us the matchups in this singles Dream Breaker format. It's going to be Brooke Buckner against Megan Fudge. Hunter Johnson against Yates Johnson. Can't wait to see that rotation. CJ Klinger against Ben Newell right, and Billy Ray against Christine Trufanovich. That's the big matchup to me. That's the big matchup to me is Millie versus Trifunovich. Can Trifunovich possibly get more points than Millie or break even? Or can Millie really take it to her and get at least three out of four in each of their matchups? So you'd be looking for Trifunovich to get just two. That would be a win for you. Yeah, and like I said, she's not bad at singles. She's had a lot of good singles results earlier in her career. But, uh, you know, into her mid-30s, I know how that goes. And sometimes uh, you got to leave it on the doubles court and kind of bypass uh, the singles. These young bucks are just, just too fast and too good. Brooke Buckner will lead out the serve against Megan Fudge. Into the net she goes, Megan Fudge getting the first point of the Dream Breaker. And on paper, slight edge to Fudge, but the tennis background of Buckner, as you've mentioned several times, is very high end. Point one. Brooke Buckner, as you mentioned, graduated from Michigan in 2015 as the program's all-time leader in singles, doubles, and combined wins. Oh, what a shot Megan.
Megan Fudge just lofts it into the corner. Buckner thought that one was sailing long. Yeah, that was the perfect storm. Buckner tried to sneak in and then lets the ball go as it plops right in the corner for Fudge. So precise. Gets three of the four points. We move on to the battle of the twins. It's Yates Johnson against Hunter Johnson. Yes, and, and Megan Fudge known for her speed, court coverage, and defensive prowess on the singles court. Probably a few players out there with more firepower or bigger strokes, but no one gets to more balls and no one uh, forces their opponent to play more than Megan Fudge. Yates Johnson in the red, Hunter Johnson in the black. And they've squared off quite a few times in tournament play. Hunter getting the best of them most of the time, but very tight matchups. Not this time, Yates oh, no, Johnson no. turning the tide against his twin brother. I mean, the edge right here is razor thin. They are both very, very good players and almost, almost carbon copies of each other. Shocker. So Hunter Johnson trying to salvage the split with his brother who Yates able to get those first two points. That is wide. His team on the side of Hunter Johnson for the Atlanta Bouncers saying that ball maybe was long that he played. Didn't call it though. So we proceed to the next matchup. CJ Klinger, Ben Newell. Lefty South Paul battle. Columbus with a healthy five-point lead. And I would look for C.J. Klinger to really target the Newell backhand, but with his foot speed, very hard uh, to find that wing. And he's two for two. That's two serves to the backhand side of Newell and two errors. Ben Newell coming away with that point. Yeah, Klinger, I think, uh, Looking over to the sideline, thinking he should have gone with topspin there. He went with the, the drop of volley unsuccessfully. Yeah! CJ Klinger victorious in that one. So we move on to the next rotation of Millie Rain and Christine Trifunovic. This is a big one. Nine, All the pressure on Trifunovic. She did, snuck in at the right time, stayed back, wait, waited for a good ball to come forward, and she got one. I expect Trifunovic to stay back mostly. We'll see how much Millie Rain decides to come forward to the kitchen line. Yeah. Millie Rain with a cross-court passing shot and a beauty. Why, why is every time I say something they do the opposite, Michelle? I said Trifunovic staying back, she comes kamikazing into the net. <laughs> Great analysis, Adam. Uh, Columbus with an early 11 to 3 lead. So we will have the end change and continue on with this rotation. Trifunovic looking to crack the scoreboard for her team. Not looking good, though, for the Atlanta Bouncers. That's right. And this uh, certainly not surprising. But as I mentioned, this is a pretty even matchup on paper. So for De Columbus to come out with an 11-3 lead uh, is, is just quality play from them. And let's see if they can continue that momentum and uh, be the first team to 21. Another point for Millie Rain, that's huge. Yep, those those early in the point shots from Trifunovic have got to be deep in the court. If Millie Rain is stepping into an approach shot coming forward to the kitchen, Trifunovic is gonna be in trouble. Christine Trifunovic coming to life for her final point. We 
Go back to rotation number one, Megan Fudge and Brooke Buckner. Four, Battle of the Big Ten, former tennis stars. up with her new team. We're, we're going to have to find out if they ever played each other because they're close in age. Mm -hmm. They're they're both in kind of, I believe, their early 30s, so there's a very reasonable chance they play tennis against each other. Brooke Buckner with a lethal finish. Yes, and that's the, that's the thing about a slice shot. Often it Stays low, hits the court and skids, but occasionally it floats up high, and that's what happened there to Fudge. Oh, that's a winner for Megan Fudge. She's just so good at it. It's like she's behind in the point uh, for almost the entirety of the point. She gets on the run and comes up with a huge angle passing shot. Such a great shot for Megan Fudge. Makes it look easy. Oh, what a grab from Brooke Buckner. Megan Fudge nearly had it. Yeah, just enough on the angle from Buckner. Bouncers will take every point they can get. And we return to the Battle of the Twins. Yates Johnson and Hunter Johnson. Yates is in the red, if you can't tell the difference between the two. Hunter is with Atlanta in the black t-shirt. And with the sir. Oh, Hunter Johnson with the winner right off the gate. But you, you could see uh, sometimes when you hit a weak return and you're playing someone with such good ground strokes, you kind of have to guess and he was put in a tough position in that, in that situation. So Yates countered that point with a return to Hunter's backhand. That was a good reach volley from Yates as well, kind of handcuffing uh, Hunter Johnson on his hip. Evenly split so far, Hunter Johnson will take the serve. Walter Johnson gets the edge, winning three points on his brother. I mean, that's a big three. Uh, they already had a slight cushion, so to not allow Hunter to get his team back in was huge from Yates. Klinger played it safe on that overhead. Yeah, and you can see he is even possibly taking some pace off the ball to make sure he gets it to the backhand of Ben Newell. Columbus out of the gate, and they're not stopping now. C.J. Klinger. It's probably somewhere in the vicinity of 17 or 18 out of the 20 shots that, that he's played have gone to the backhand of Newell. I like the strategy. They obviously have a game plan. Another point for Columbus. Two points out from closing in on their first match victory here in Daytona Beach. Yeah. Well, there you have it. CJ Klinger puts his team with a good position for Millie Rain to potentially close out against Christine Trifonovich. for Columbus Pickleball Club. Started at number 12 in the standings and they earned their first match win here in Daytona Beach. A huge win on their side. How were they able to create so much steady separation in this Dream Breaker, Adam? Uh, you know what, Michelle, that's a great question. I am 
pretty shocked, especially, look at the score, 21-8. The bouncers unable to even get uh, to double digits against this Columbus team. It was a great job, and the main thing for me in that Dream Breaker was C.J. Klinger sticking to the game plan, finding his spots where he wanted to go and not getting flustered. That's an amazing job by him at such a young age. Another wild finish on championship court, and we continue our coverage here with all of this incredible pickleball. Don't forget the next matchup you'll be seeing after us will be with the Chicago Slice taking on the DC Pickleball Club. That match coming up on Championship Court next. But first, let's check in with the winners. Cameron Blackwood, what do you have? Millen, you guys came out on top today. Like you said, you have such a strong singles lineup. But we want to know the mastermind, but who, by height, who did the counters against the Atlanta Bouncers? The counters. Uh, we actually put our lineup up there first, and um, Megan actually is the mastermind behind putting her first. And speaking of Megan, what a crucial person to bring on the team. What has that been like bringing her on the team for Columbus? Yeah, she's amazing. She's, she, has, she has it all, doubles, mix, and singles. So she's a huge asset to our team. And uh, yeah, we're looking to go all the way this year. So we'll see, one by one. And Megan, you being a part now of the Columbus team, just how special is it and having your expertise pay off? No, I'm just super excited to play for this team, in particular for every team win, uh, $1,000 is going to be donated to Pelotonia, a cancer research foundation. So we're just super excited that we can bring that home for Pelotonia and uh, for our team, the best. There you have it. Columbus Pickleball team takes the Dream Breaker, and they are continuing to get points on the board. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more MLP.